Hi there, welcome to Zetas Tech Talks, episode number two. Uh, today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about PID controllers. And I want to keep this just kind of a layman's uh, explanation. I guess don't want to get too technical. But uh, what I really want to talk to you about is why would you want a PID controller? Now, basically, <laughs> the simple reason is constant temperature. Uh, for most cappuccino machines, for instance, this one here, the Rancilio Silvia, uh, the thermostat will keep the temperature within about a 40 degree Fahrenheit range, which isn't really all that great. So with the PID controller, you know, depending on how you have it set up, you can keep that to within a couple of degrees of your target temperature. And what that means is you can draw shots that have a lot of crema and are basically the way you want them. Now, that's the main reason, and if you're a geek like me, and there's other reasons why you'd like to computer control your machine. Um, the, the next best reason is the idle timeout. So you wake up in the morning, you turn on your coffee machine, and you have your cup of coffee, and you don't turn your machine off. Well, it's going to stay on all day, wasting a lot of power. Uh, if you're computer controlled, then your machine will turn off with an idle timeout and right now I've got mine set to about 45 minutes, which seems good, but you can set that to be whatever you'd like. Um, the next reason is system turn on. If you want your machine to come on at 6 a.m. every morning, so it's uh, nice and hot when you want to wake up and, and pull your shot, you can do that. And that's actually fairly important for these machines because they take about 20 minutes to half an hour to get up to a reasonable steam temperature and get your group head up to a temperature where you can actually draw a reasonable shot. Um, then there's the steam timeout. Now on these machines, to put it in steam mode, you click on this steam switch and that brings the temperature up to about 150 degrees till the thermostat kicks out. It'll actually stay there. Now if you forget and leave that switch on, that's a good way to wreck your machine because your element will overheat, your boiler will boil dry, and you'll essentially wreck your machine. Now I've been through about three elements in this machine uh, before I put my PID controller in and now when I put it in steam mode you push up on the keypad it puts it into steam mode for three minutes which is enough to heat the water up and then it turns off and so no risk of wrecking your machine. And the last reason is it's just fun to watch. Now this machine it's computer controlled, so it has a voice. It tells you what it's doing. If you put it in steam mode, it'll tell you what temperature it's at. And it signals an alarm when it's up to temperature, if you'd like. And it's a good conversation piece. So when your buddies come over, you have something else to chat about. <laughs> uh, what I particularly like about this PID controller is the nice small form factor. There's a circuit board inside the machine and all that is on the outside is just this tiny little keypad and LCD display. Some of the other uh, options for PID controller, there's these big giant kind of aftermarket things that bolt on the side. They don't really look all that professional. Uh, ugly is actually another word for it. So. I think this one here is is kind of the way to go. Uh, installation is somewhat tricky, so you have to know what you're doing. Uh, on the inside of the machine, there's a, a 9 or 12 volt power supply to run the circuit. So you have to wire that into the, the mains coming into the machine. There's a triac driver that controls the heating element. And there's a thermocouple that you need to bolt into the, the bottom of the boiler or the top of the boiler, wherever, um, just so you get good readings. And uh, you have to mount the circuit board inside the machine, so you have to be a little bit handy to do this on your own. Um, later on in uh, one of the, the future tech talks, I'll go through an installation video. Meanwhile, there's pictures on my site of how I did this machine. and. Uh, I guess we'll go through a bit of a run through on the menus here. Ok, 
Okay, so turn on the machine and it boots. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of the display. So uh, there's the date and time on this, which is, you know, a little bit handy, neither here nor there. Temperature is 105 degrees, and I have this thing set at 107 right now, so um, it'll just maintain around that temperature. Now these two bar graphs on the right, the first one is actually the duty cycle on the element. So right now it's sitting pretty close to zero. Uh, actually you can see it's just creeping up there a little bit. And you can see the lights flashing, that's the when the element's actually on. So now that we've dropped down to 102 degrees, you can see that the PID is kicking in and trying to compensate, so slowly raising the element temperature and the boiler temperature. This bar graph on the right here, that's the timeout. So that'll slowly creep down. Uh, like I said before, it's set to 45 minutes, so that'll just count down to zero and then no more heat will be applied to the element. If you push any button on the keypad, the idle time resets, so that'll, you know, you can see it pop back up there to the full 45 minutes again. And so at this temperature here, you could draw your shot. Now you pull your shot of uh, espresso, and then if you want to steam your milk, you push the up button, that puts it into steam mode. Steam mode engaged. So this gives you 100% duty cycle in the heating element for three minutes. And it reads the temperature out to you as it's heating, so you'll have an idea when it's ready to go. And all this is configurable too, so if, you know the audio bothers you, you can always turn it off. Oh, needless to say, there's a speaker installed in the machine. That's uh, one other thing you'll have to install. So here the temperature's creeping up. I won't bore you with the rest of this. It just goes up to 145, you steam your milk, uh, then it goes back into normal mode. If you push the down button here, that actually forces it to go into idle mode. Uh, the center button is the menu. So here you can set your desired temperature. Like I said, mine was set at 107. And I don't want to accept that because 107 is where I like it. Um, there's a, a low water level. So you get an alarm if your reservoir is, is getting down because you don't want to actually be sucking air in and vapor lock your your pump or run your boiler dry so that's actually fairly important too you can set your date and time obviously and in here is the PID parameters uh, so the top item here is 
the PID. So here you can set your proportional, your integral, and your derivative parameters. Um, I usually just set the P and I since it's a heating circuit. That's all it really seems to matter. And last but not least in the menu is the LCD contrast. Okay, contrast is set. And the left button here just backs you out of the menus. So that's kind of a quick overview of the menu structure. And like I said, this is all very flexible. So if you want to tweak the menus or get them to do different things, it's it's easy to do. Um, and the last thing I'll show you, since it's late-ish and I actually want a coffee, I'll pull a shot. And this is kind of where the fun to watch part is because you can actually watch the boiler temperature drop right off as you're pulling the shot. Okay. zoom in on this again. Now you can see the temperature, nice 108. Pull the shot. And you can see how quickly that drops off. Alright, now we'll put it in steam mode. Now the milk is steamed. And we'll be timing out shortly. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this a little bit interesting. Cheers.